For today's case, we talk about a gun insurance group that refused to protect one of its members when costs got too high in a self-defense situation. Hello, everyone, and welcome to One Civil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. As always, I hope you enjoy this legal content, and today will be the day I earn your subscription. For today's story, we're covering this case of National Association for Legal Gun Defense versus Glenn Hensley. National Association for Legal Gun Defense is an organization that provides insurance to its members, as so many groups do. For some sort of membership fee, they will pay for your expenses if you're involved in some sort of incident. And that's what they do. And Glenn Hensley was involved in some sort of incident. Initially, the National Association for Legal Gun Defense offered to pay, and then not so much. So in today's coverage, we're going to discuss what the law is and whether or not the National Association for Legal Gun Defense will be forced to pay for the defense. Let's get started with this. NALGD is a membership organization that promises to cover the legal fees of any member who faces criminal or civil action related to an incident wherein that member used a weapon in self-defense. Hensley became a member of NALGD in 2014 after he became involved in First Amendment audits, organized gatherings of photographers and others who videotaped from public spaces for the purposes of educating people about their right to do so. At one such audit in California on December the 7th of 2017, Hensley was involved in an altercation with the Church of Scientology's security guard. The altercation led to Hensley's arrest, initially for the California offense of grand theft person, which was later upgraded to the more serious offense of felony robbery. I've never heard the phrase grand theft person, but I guess it kind of makes sense, sort of. In the days following his arrest, Hensley sought and obtained approval from NALGD to cover his legal expenses under the liability coverage agreement. However, after NALGD later refused to pay his attorney's fees, Hensley filed suit bringing claims for violation of Te Texas's Deceptive Practices Act, negligent misrepresentation, breach of contract, and alternatively promissory estoppel. So yes, it is one of these insurance groups that provides insurance to its members. There's been an incident in which apparently the result is he's being charged with grand theft or robbery. And either way, you know, he's an insured member and wants coverage. And they're saying, well, we're not going to cover you. So he says, well, you know, you can't do that. Okay, so let's learn a little bit more about the agreement. The terms of the agreement effective at the time of Hensley's arrest provided that NALGD would defend and assist its members for the use of force to counter an immediate threat of violence or a countermeasure that involved defending oneself or the well-being of another person from physical harm by use of any type, kind, or make of a delineated list of weapons. Hensley testified that he traveled in December 2017 to Hollywood, California location of the Church of Scientology to perform a First Amendment audit. As his group filled on a sidewalk outside the church, a security guard emerged from the church and told them to leave. Hensley and the security guard exchanged words and both became upset. According to Hensley, the security guard became extremely aggressive, stepped to within inches of him, pulled out a flashlight. With the flashlight near his face and blinding him, Hensley felt like he was about to be harmed, so he pulled the flashlight down. According to Hensley, the flashlight then came out of the guard's hand, and as Hensley turned to separate himself from the guard, the guard tackled Hensley from behind and slammed him into a car. Hensley said that the NALGD director, Larry Kilberg, on December the 8th, the day following his arrest, to inquire as to whether NALGD would cover his legal expenses, relate to the incident, and Kilberg asked Hensley to email him a video of the incident for his review. The following day, after Hensley emailed the video, he received a response from Kilberg indicating that NALGD would cover the fee, saying, quote, okay, NALGD will write, wrong spelling, write you a check for $3,000 to pay your attorney. We'll need an attorney invoice or payment agreement before we can send you a check. Send a copy of the bail bond you paid. NALG needs your permission to post your video on its website and testimonial from you. And shortly thereafter, NLAGD did in fact send a $3,000 reimbursement check for the attorney Hemming, dated January the 2nd of 2018, after he did retain them. According to Hensley, after the charges were upgraded, Kielsberg, from the group, the NLGD people, they told him he was in Hensley's best interest to find another attorney, 
and Kilberg assured him that NLAGD would cover the expenses of this new attorney. At trial, Hensley read into evidence a text message from late February 2018 where Kilberg advised Henley, Hensley to find a new attorney. Hensley took Kilberg's advice and contacted another attorney, Lisa Holt, Holt, who initially quoted a retainer fee of $100,000, an additional $75,000 fee should the case proceed to trial, which sounds more realistic because that's, you know, the kind of expenses you can be talking about in some of these cases. Hensley testified he spoke with Kilberg about the possible representation, and after Kilberg also spoke with the attorney, he told Hensley to proceed with hiring her. According to Hensley, Kilberg said the attorney's fee was not unreasonable given the charge. It's not. According to Hensley, the attorney later notified him that she had spoken with Kilberg, and that Kilberg had agreed to pay her retainer, and that Hensley was to pay her, and that he would be reimbursed. Accordingly, he and Hool entered into a fee agreement, and Hensley only paid $125,000 for representation. Hensley testified that he relied on Kilberg's promise to pay the fee when he hired Hool, and that but for the promise, he would not have hired the attorney because he could not have otherwise afforded the fee. The attorney testified by deposition that she had spoke directly with Kilberg on March the 1st or 2nd of 2018, and he assured you, assured her that NALGD would cover her $175,000 fees to represent Hainsley. And now here's some testimony relating to that. Hainsley's trial counsel, what was discussed during the call? The attorney, quite simply the fact that NALGD was going to pay Mr. Hensley's legal fees. That was discussed directly between me and Mr. Kilberg and I during that phone call. That was essentially what the phone call was about. The trial counsel, and just to be clear, did Mr. Kilberg say to you that he paid the full $175,000 retainer fee? The attorney, he absolutely did. According to Kilberg, Kilberg testified that he managed the day-to-day -day operations of NALGD and made all final decisions for the organization, aided sometimes by the advice of his general counsel. Kilberg admitted on December 9th he viewed the video of the incident that Henley had mailed him about and agreed to reimburse him the $3,000 for his original attorney. However, he stated that Hensley had misrepresented to him the altercation with the security card, and upon viewing additional videos and evidence of the incident, an ALGD made the decision not to cover the attorney's fees. Kilberg contended that because, in his opinion, Hensley was the aggressor who committed a robbery of the guard's flashlight, Hensley was not acting in self-defense so as to trigger the NLAGDB's liability under the agreement. Kilberg denied that he ever made any promises to Hensley, and claimed that he verbally informed Hensley on roughly January 4th that NLAGD would not pay for his legal representation. When asked by Hensley's trial counsel whether he told the attorney that NLAGD would pay for her fees, Kilberg initially testified that he could not recall whether or not he had said that. However, on re-examination, when pressed by his attorney on the subject, Kilberg's memory apparently became clearer. NLGD's trial counsel, and the attorney made a number of statements that were read into the record. Do you deny that those statements were made by you, agreed to pay $175,000 for the legal defense? Kilberg, I never agreed to her. The only thing she asked me was, she, was he a member, and I said yes. And that is why the phone call was so brief. Hmm. Okay, so the trial court found in favor of Hensley and signed a judgment awarding him to $125,000 of damages. Interestingly, however, the judgment does not specify grounds for recovery and contains no findings of fact or conclusions of law were requested or either filed. So that's a little bit interesting, right? The, the trial court just issues a judgment. No findings of fact, no conclusion of law, just says you win $125,000, which is not normally what you see from a trial court. You know, normally you see some analysis and discussion of facts and stuff, but not this trial court. This trial court apparently decided to go with the nothing and just decided to go with, you win $125,000. Okay, so how do we deal with that reality? Well, in a bench trial with no findings or facts or conclusions of law, the trial judgment implies all findings of fact that are necessary to support it. Yeah, so in the absence of anything, the Court of Appeals will assume any legal rationale any factual rationale supported by the record, right? The trial court, as always, is the trier of fact, right? And we've seen some contradictory testimony by people. Now, one of the things that jurors can do, and for that matter, judges can do, when they're in the role of the juror, that is the finder of fact, one of the things they can choose to do is they can believe certain witnesses in whole or part. 
and they can disbelieve certain witnesses in whole or part, and they can weigh the, the testimony of various witnesses differently based on a whole number of factors, like their credibility, you know, what they're saying, how truthful it is, seems to them, right? They can weigh these things as jurors do, right? So it would be possible for a juror, and in fact, and a judge in the same role to say, you know, I don't believe that guy, that, came, that guy for the attorney so much. I don't believe, I don't believe this, that guy so much. I believe, you know, what the, the client and the attorney says. That seems more credible to me. NALGD's only complaint on appeal challenges the trial court's judgment as improper under breach of contract theory because, according to NLAGD, Hensley's conduct during the altercation with the security guard was not covered by the agreement. We acknowledge the potential merit of this argument in light of the record below us. However, even assuming that NLAGD is correct that it did not breach the agreement with Hensley, the law requires us to inquire further. We must determine if the judgment was supported by any other grounds. After reviewing the pleadings and the evidence, we hold that judgment can be supported on a theory of promissory estoppel. And because NLAGD assigned no error on this ground, we must accept the validity of that judgment. The elements of promissory estoppel are a promise, foreseeable of reliance thereon by the promisor and substantial reliance by the promisee. So this is an alternative theory of alternative theory. This is not based in law, but in equity, right? This is an equitable theory, promissory estoppel, right? We don't have a contract, but I've made a promise to you, which I can, which I can, which you would be reasonable to rely on. And you do rely on it to your detriment, right? That's promissory estoppel. So, you know, you can get there if you can show these kinds of things. So, you know, contract, if it's in the contract, promissory estoppel, if it's outside the contract. Okay, let's press that theory. NALGD takes the position that Hensley's actions related to the altercation with the security guard were not covered by the agreement and, in fact, were well outside the judgment's terms, agreement's terms. Then, according to NLGD's own logic, if NLGD made any promises to cover the attorney's fees, they were necessarily made outside the agreement. So this is kind of like, you know, this is where you, you leap from the pan into the fire, right? So NLGD is insistent. This is not a contract. This is well outside our contract. It's not part of our contract, not part of our contract, not part of our contract at all. It's like, okay, it's not part of your contract at all. Exactly. So any promises must be made outside your contract. Right. So promissory estoppel. Wait. Wait, what, what, what's that now? Uh, yeah. There is ample evidence in the record that NLAGD made multiple such promises over the course of nearly three months, even after Kielberg viewed video evidence of the altercation. On March the 1st or 2nd, Kielberg assured the new attorney that NLAGD would pay her fees to represent him. After speaking with the attorney, Kielberg told Hensley to proceed with hiring her. Because of this evidence is sufficient to prove promises outside the agreement that would pay for the fees, Hensley satisfied this pro first prong of promissory estoppel. Sure seems like it. Because NLAG failed to raise a challenge that the judgment was not supported under a theory of promissory estoppel, and because we hold the record contains some evidence to support it, we therefore affirm. Thus, that brings us to the end of the case of National Association for Legal Gun Defense versus Glenn Hensley. In this case, the National Association for Legal Gun Defense said that they would pay their members' attorney, and they hired an attorney on that basis, and then didn't pay them. And so we go to court, and the court, the trial court just says, yeah, you know, you win, uh, Glenn, uh, you win $125,000. doesn't say why or under what legal theory, just says, you know, you win, and uh, they appeal. And the Court of Appeals says, well, you know, it, because it's a bench trial and we don't know, we'll just assume anything that would make the verdict work because they're the, you know, they're the initial trier and that's what we do on the Court of Appeals, right? So we'll fill in any boxes we need to. So they say, okay, look, um, we're not so sure about the contract thing, but the promissory estoppel thing, yeah. So if you want to insist it's outside the contract, fine. Here's the standard for promissory estoppel. They made a promise. You could tell they would rely on the promise. They did rely on the promise. It caused them harm. It's like, yep, all those elements are made. So NALGD will have to pay Glenn Hensley $125,000, and NALGD gets some uh, publicity to my listeners about their wonderful, wonderful service they offer to their members, as documented by a court case. As you might be considering NALGD for your gun insurance needs, you may wish to consider this in mind. But at least for the moment, that brings us to the end of consideration of this case. Thank you so much for being part of the Uncivil Law family. If you enjoyed this legal education content, please hit the subscribe button. 
it really helps the channel grow. We appreciate your continuing support. And until later, my friends, cheers and goodbye.